went with the prime design ladder. Honestly, I really don't get on the roof that much, but I wanted some option to do some exterior bikes. So I went with this Lolo Rex. I think they call that the Lad Rad. Here we have our propane island. I wanted to do all of my propane um, utilities, appliances, if you will, in one location because I thought it was important to vent it and be safe. I guess it's just angle aluminum and then just built the trays on that. It kept it really low profile. It's super light and they work super good. What's up guys? I'm Phil, AKA Phil Dangerous. And here. And I'm Joanna. We're super stoked to show you a little tour into our van. We offer full service guided tours and lessons clinics. We also offer shuttles in Sedona. So next time you come to Sedona, please come find us. We would love to set up a full adventure for you. We want to show you Van Dam, our home away from home. We have a Ford Transit all-wheel drive, uh, 147 wheelbase, I believe. I didn't go with the full extended just because sometimes I got to parallel park this beast and that can be a trick. I did a Van Compass two inch lift kit, which was actually pretty sweet and easy to install. I put some Method bronze wheels on there. Went with the BFG all-terrain TAKOs. Those tires are awesome. It's been going super good in the snow. Did a little bit of the vinyl wrap in a few places just to break up some of the sort of monotonous gray there. Give it a little bit of texture. And uh, back here, went with the prime design ladder. Honestly, I really don't get on the roof that much, but I wanted some option to do some exterior bikes. So I went with this Lolo Rex. I think they call that the Lad Rad. Um, ladder rack. It was super cheap, super easy to throw a couple bikes on the back, especially when you don't want to take the front wheels off and all that stuff. Despite what the internet said, I actually couldn't fit the spare tire underneath where the spare tire is supposed to go. Um, so I went with this, I believe this is an Illumines um, rear spare tire carrier. And yeah, I went with the all wheel drive basically because I do some snowboard trips in the winter. I didn't want to have any issues in the snow anywhere. Just kind of wanted security there. The fuel econ economy isn't as great, but it's good enough for sure. Up top, I went with a Flatline Van Company roof rack. To oh get yeah, up there. get up there. <laughs> you got it. Nice. So yeah, I went with the Flatline Van Company roof rack and we did some solar panels up there. I believe I have four 100 watt Renergy solar panels. I also did two max fans up there because we don't have windows. That way we'd get the appropriate ventilation. Also threw on the Fiamma um, awning on the side, which that thing comes in clutch every now and then, but we really don't use it that much. Let's uh, take a look in the garage here. Sweet. Instead of framing in the walls and making an actual bed frame, I used E-Track. So if you notice up here, you'll see E-Track and that's what the bed is suspended upon. That allowed me to get maximum width in the garage. Again, this is a DIY build and trust me, I didn't take time to sand anything or put any trim up. So don't judge me about that stuff. Um, but I built these trays, which actually work out really well. And honestly, I just went to the hardware store and I got some angle iron aluminum. Um, I guess it's just angle aluminum and then just built the trays on that. It kept it really low profile. It's super light and they work super good. These come all the way out. We have like maximum bin storage. You can get these bins on and off super easy. Load up tons of gear in these things. The other little thing that I did, which is kind of interesting is I strapped a bunch of boat trailer ratchet straps up here. So whether I decide to stack these bins all the way up to the top, or you can use these handy dandy straps to basically load anything you want in there and then just boom, strap it up. That's where I keep my snowboards. Um, sometimes we take an easy up tent. We can just put the easy up in there, strap it in and it's out of the way. Super cool. All right, over here, we got a little bit of an outdoor shower, which we use every now and then. Um, this is a wheel well tank. So despite it looking huge, it's actually only, I think 23 gallons or something like that. Um, pretty standard components across the board here, including a Bosch water heater. Um, I got a couple of Renergy 100 
amp hour lithium batteries. So I have two of those in there, 2000 watt inverter, and then everything else is pretty standard. From this angle, you can tell that we're coffee snobs because we have a fellow kettle and a fellow oed grinder, which is top of the line. Really recommend that grinder if you're trying to get your coffee game up. Your shower right there, you know, nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. Guys, do you have hot water? How's your uh, energy supply when you run that water heater? Pretty good. It actually keeps up well with the 200 watt uh, or 200 amp hour, sorry, batteries. Um, if I heat up a tank of water, usually the water will stay hot for at least six hours, if not more. Um, that'll get us, you know, we can wash the dishes or take a couple of quick showers. Um, I would say if my batteries are fully charged 100%, when I heat a tank of water up, it probably drains the batteries 15 to 20%, maybe. It's a little bit rough here, but uh, I still need to do some trim work, but I wanted to get some insulation in the doors and behind this panel as much as I could. Um, I glued some fairing strips and then basically put some cedar planking on here, stuffed a bunch of insulation behind it. It's a little rough, but it definitely gets the job done. And uh, we stay nice and cozy when it's cold at night. Is that a magnet to keep the multi-tool <laughs> so smart. Yeah, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you're always taking the front axles on and off. So yes. got to have that multi-tool handle. Oh, here's one of my favorite little gadgets. If you don't have one, this thing's clutch. All right, so you know how you always have that floor pump just kicking around on the floorboard? There's no good place to keep a floor pump. This little guy is your gauge and air compressor all in one. <laughs> Just like that. You can inflate your tires from zero to 100 PSI plus several times. And as long as you recharge it with the handy dandy USB rechargeable, you only have to do that, I don't know, every couple weeks. It's clutch. This thing's awesome. All right, taking a look on the inside. Here we go. Boop. All right. And everything's DIY. Um, in fact, a lot of the wood in here, including the countertops is locally sourced wood. This is black walnut. Um, and again, local, I think I took this, this was all one piece, one raw slab, cut it in half, opened it up, and poured an epoxy river down the middle. I think it gives a really nice aesthetic. It's definitely sturdy, maybe a little heavy for the van, but who cares, it's worth it. All of the scrap pieces that I took from that, I used to sort of build this little tabletop here which works out. We have that mounted on a Lagoon table mount um, and that thing's clutch. So you can kind of have a workspace back here, which works out if you're just kind of hanging out, working on the computer, or you can sort of flip it around and bring it over here and it can act a little bit as a table for, for both of you. So that works out really nice. It also tucks away in this area really nicely. I did a pill and stick backsplash up here, which I'm not 100% happy with. Um, I think Hannah actually has me convinced I can get away with real tile. So I wanna try that. Super nice. Homemade cabinets are always tricky. This is my first go at homemade cabinets. They're a little rough around the edges, but they get the job done. It holds what we need to. This is our little pantry area up here. Lock button cabinet latches all the way around. A Little bit of extra storage down below. This is something that I didn't think would work, but so far it's worked well, is we have magnets, which actually hold our cabinets closed. So we kind of just keep random things in all these drawers, pots and pans, Tupperware, cookware. All right, here we have our propane island. I wanted to do all of my propane um, utilities, appliances, if you will, in one location, because I thought it was important to vent it and be safe. So everything's sealed, all of the plumbing, everything within this is sealed up and vented through the floor. Um, have a little extension here. So you have your cooktop in the middle. There's a propane storage, which is accessible from the outside for easy loading, unloading. And underneath, you can see the outlet here. That's a Propex HS2000 propane heater. So that thing's pretty clutch. In fact, you probably can't see it, but we have a digital thermostat here by the bed. Um, it's kind of nice to be able to adjust the temperature in the middle of the night. It works out super well. All right, up top, these cabinets we just use for clothes storage, stuff like that. It's all good, whatever you can stuff in there. Try to keep the weight low, but you gotta car carry this stuff somewhere. Boom. Up top, cedar ceilings, tongue and groove. Also put some of these van essential covers on the, uh, the, the fans up top. So that's super nice. 
especially in the winter time. And then down below, we have our Dometic refrigerator freezer, definitely able to store a bunch of food in there. I went with that style refrigerator freezer because when you open it, it seems to keep the cold air down in there. You don't lose as much. It seems to be really efficient. No issues with any of these appliances and we've had it a little over a year now and everything's working super, super good. So one thing I did when I originally built the van, the bed was actually an inch and a half higher and believe it or not, that was just enough to make it pretty uncomfortable. So recently I lowered it an inch and a half and you wouldn't believe the difference that it made. It's crazy. Um, now we could actually sit up in the bed if we want. Um, I actually extended it a little bit too to make it a bit longer so my feet aren't hanging off as much. Um, but yeah, it's been clutch. We sleep good in here now. It's quite cozy. Do you sleep long ways? We do now. So originally we were sleeping width ways and believe it or not, the bed is still actually a little bit wider width ways. However, because these little cutouts don't allow you any like headroom or foot room, it's not worth it. So I ended up extending the bed about a foot that way, a couple of inches this way, and we sleep way better this way now. I probably need to move this cabinet over to this side since we have this control panel here. Um, but yeah, we'll get there eventually. The other little thing that I really like is the, the dimmer panels for the lights. So you can just kind of set the mood wherever you want there. I think that was like a $5 Amazon switch. So that's clutch. Um, we have our switch for our inverter over here. We have our hot water switch. And then of course, water pump. And then the gray water tank is underneath. And then we could, we have this one for the water dump. So we could empty our gray water tank whenever. So your gray water tank is underneath the van? It is underneath the van. I think it's about a five gallon tank. And that usually gets us through a couple of days. Every now and then it overfills and you gotta figure out, you know, the appropriate place to dump that. But for the most part, it's fine. It works out really good. Again, the fresh water tank's only about 20 gallons, 23 gallons. Um, so we don't run into that issue too often. Honestly, we have to find places to fill up our water. That's one of the most challenging things so far is being able to find a place to actually get a water hose hooked up and do that. Uh, love, I love the layout. I think the layout's great. Um, again, this is a shorter van. It's not that spacious, but A, the garage is super huge. It's wide. I could put bikes in there. I could put plenty of toys, all that stuff in there. Um, yeah, layout I love. I love the cooktop over here. I love having the easy access for propane. Um, this is all working really great, great and it seems sized appropriately as well. What do I hate about it? There's a few things. So one, when I put the subfloor in, I didn't join the subfloor pieces. I just put it in there, it fit really tight and I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. Was well, it turns out when you're standing right in here somewhere, it squeaks. I don't know if you can hear it, but somewhere in there is a little creak. I'm probably the only one that notices this, but it drives me crazy. Um, so that's definitely something that I hate. Everything else, honestly, I kind of love it in here. This is our home away from home. And uh, yeah, it's sweet. I guess I could throw in one more thing that I dislike, and that's the fuel economy. After the lift kit and the upsized tires, I probably get about 13 and a half miles to the gallon. Not great. Again, all wheel drive, so you're not going to get the best fuel economy but it's not the end of the world. You know, it's totally worth it if you factor in the cost of hotels that you're not spending money on. The Ford chassis has been great. It drives really well. To me, it drives like a car. There's lots of features um, up front that make it very easy and intuitive to drive, such as adaptive cruise control, um, lane keeping assistance, stuff like that. Um, it's very comfortable. I think the maintenance cost hopefully is gonna be really low from what I read. That seems like it's um, the way to go. Um, and again, I wanted an all-wheel drive. There's not a lot of options out there these days. And for the money, my salary, I had to go with Ford to make it affordable. So check me out. I'm on uh, Instagram as Phil Dangerous. And then you could check out our um, Sedona MTB Guides Instagram account as well. Awesome. We'll put all that information in the description of the Perfect. videos. Brad, thanks for showing us your van. Yeah, thanks for coming.